HQ. We got Sweet 16 games in action today. You're looking at the Thursday slate of games for just the fifth time ever. We have all the one and two seeds in the Sweet 16, which means there's no shortage of storylines. We got a lot of good teams, a lot of good players, and a lot of good storylines to go along with it. The first game to tip off, Clemson at Arizona versus Arizona, rather, 709 Eastern on CBS. We have a rematch of last year's national championship game, Bama and UNC, and perhaps the game that most of our analysts are most pumped for, Illinois and Iowa State out of Boston. That is in the late slate at 1009 Eastern. Well, let's welcome in our college basketball analyst Matt McCall here with us on set to talk about the Thursday slate of Sweet 16 games. We're going to run down all of them, but we're starting with SDSU and UConn. It is in Boston at the Garden, so you figure it's kind of a home game atmosphere for UConn. Um, SDSU here, obviously these teams are familiar with one another, but just how tough of a test is this going to be, Matt, for San Diego State? Well, let's start here. How's your bracket? It's terrible. Your bracket's terrible. You really got to do me like uh, that? I was right asking. I was just asking. I just want to know no. how your bracket's doing. Matt <laughs> knows because we are both Gators. We both had faith in Florida. That didn't work it out, wasn't obviously. Great. It wasn't great. Um, Can't I, give up 102 points and think you're going to advance in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Impossible. Walter, Walter Clayton Jr. cannot carry the entire team all the way to the Final Four. It just can't happen. <laughs> and then also I picked Auburn, as you know, to win it all, and that didn't work out for me either. Thank you, Yale. Well, I had Kentucky, so, okay. you know, and we know all the rumors that are going around coach Cal right now which is crazy to even talk about but when you think of the matchup of last year's national championship game and you look at San Diego State I just don't see how they can win this basketball game and they have one of the best defenses in all the entire country but UConn is better this year on the offensive end of the floor than they were last which year which is crazy which is crazy they have more <laughs> balance to have five guys averaging double figures Donovan Klingon down there on the inside they are better on the offensive end of the floor and you just allude to it it's crazy to even think about as good as this San Diego State defense is ranked 33rd in the country in total defense this is going to be too too much, UConn. Go back to last year's national championship game. The game was close in the first half. Yeah. It was a competitive game in the first half, but going to be a lot of uh, UConn fans in the TD Garden. Too much Huskies in this one. Coach <laughs> Hurley is going to have his team ready to play. Yeah, we know Danny Hurley is very superstitious, whether it's like picking M&M colors of his opponents or wearing the same underwear. Uh, whatever. I don't he know gives he... us a little too much information yeah, sometimes. I Listen, I, I was a superstitious <laughs> coach too. Some of that stuff you got to keep quiet and keep to yourself. I mean, I, I used to let my daughters pick out my socks okay. every game. It would be have a Disney pair of socks, maybe Paw Patrol, whatever it may be. <laughs> Some things you do superstitious wise, just keep to yourself, coach. Yeah, we'll we'll take the M and M's. Maybe not. We don't even really need to know about the underwear. We hope from a, a viewer perspective that this is a tight game, but I mean, we'll have to see. Let's go to the first game that is tipping off because we have Clemson and Arizona and the second round went pretty chalk mad but Clemson was the only underdog to win outright in the second round they are underdogs in this matchup again maybe they like being in that spot I think the at last check they're seven and a half point dogs you think it's going to be closer than what the uh, spread says look I'm never counting out Brad Burnell and I think he's one of the most underrated coaches in the entire country we don't talk about him enough for some reason he ends up on everybody's hot seat going into every <laughs> single season and it drives me insane they took care of Baylor, and that is a very good basketball team in Baylor that a lot of people predicted to at least get to a Sweet 16 or Elite 8, maybe even the Final Four. Scores 72 to 64 in that game. So this team is for real. But so is Arizona, and Arizona's offense, the balance that they have on the offensive end of the floor, their three guards, when you go back to their first-round matchup, had 20 assists and just two turnovers, and then Balo on the inside is a big man to handle. <laughs> think too much Zona. I like them to move on in this tournament, and I think we're going to get it. We're going to get what everybody wants. Yes. Everybody wants UConn, or, or North Carolina to face Arizona. Caleb Love against his old team. That Bama matchup, and we're going to get into that one, will be tough. But I believe Arizona moves on, and Caleb Love, I don't think he's going to try to get revenge against his old team. Yeah. 
but he's one of the best guards in the country, and that's going to be fun to watch. Certainly, that is, you know, we alluded to all the storylines in the Sweet 16, and that one is kind of like up in the air. We're waiting for it to come to fruition, but as you mentioned, the winner of that one plays North Carolina and Bama, the winner of that matchup. So let's talk about that game, because this Bama team, we know they can score. They're one of the best scoring offenses in the country. When they get going from three, it, it's incredible. That's not the question. It's the defense that has been kind of their their problem all season long. So I want to know, do you think this Bama defense can defend guys like Armando Bacon, RJ Davis, or are they just going to have to keep on scoring and just hitting their threes in order to win? They're going to have to outscore them, the yeah. bottom line. And we saw late in the year in this Alabama team a couple different occasions give up over 100 points. You're going to give up over 100 points in a basketball game. It's going to be tough to, tough to win. We talked about the Florida Gators in their first-round matchup. That was the problem was the defensive end of the floor. That's been the problem for this Alabama team. But they play with an enormous amount of freedom on the offensive end of the floor. And when you play with that kind of freedom, you're tough to beat. I keep going back to R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott, Hubert Davis as well. This group has been through adversity. There was a lot of people last season that were questioning whether or not Hubert Davis should be the coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels. That's going through. That has brought this team closer together. I think that's going to push them over the top in this basketball game. Right, maybe playing with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. All of these are great matchups, but this last one I want to talk about. It oh, seems me like too. every single analyst we have here on HQ, on Spotlight, they're always saying this is their favorite Sweet 16 matchup. Out of all of them, we have the best offense in the country, against the best defense in the country with Illinois and Iowa State. You see the offense and the defense here. Um, it's just going to be awesome to watch this one, Matt. Yeah, TJ Altsberger is a national coach of the year candidate. The job that he's done with this team, putting them in the place in the Sweet 16, still such a young head coach. But you see that giving up 61 points per game. But on the other side, the Illini, over 84 points per game, truly remarkable. And Jacqueline, think about this. And I've been saying this all week. In terms of who can push UConn, in terms of which offense, the athleticism that Illinois has out there on the floor, and here's the biggest key to me, is how they use Coleman Hawkins pulling him away from the basket. What's that going to make Donovan Klingon have to do? He's going to have to pull, be pulled away from the basket. They have great ball pressure UConn does when they pressure guards. I'm not moving them past Iowa State easily, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is when I look at the Elite Eight matchups, and I know this one's going to be a great matchup, Illinois is a team that can challenge UConn in this bracket because of the athleticism and because of the skill on the offensive end of the floor but they got their work cut out for them against Iowa State. Yeah, it feels like that East region, it's really not fair. Like it was so, it is so loaded and there was a lot of conversations about Iowa State. They should be that fourth one seed, but hey, we're gonna put you in the same bracket as UConn. So if UConn advances either way, um, it's going to be tough. <laughs> Either way, it's going to be tough. And, and Coach Hurley alluded to it early in the week in his press conferences. He kept talking about it. The committee is not making this path to a back-to-back -back national champion easy for us. They keep putting us up against it. But, Coach, you are playing in Boston. You're close to home. There is going to be a lot of blue, white, and red in the stands. He will have the home court environment in this one. And maybe uh, somewhere on the committee, they're kind of like us, Matt, and they want the Florida Gators to, <laughs> to hold on to that back to We're back. hanging on. We're hanging on. We're hang We've been hanging on since 2007. We're that's, almost 20 years. Come on. That's what happens when you lose in the first round. Matt McCall joining us here on HQ to talk about the Thursday slate of Sweet 16 games that we have on tap. A lot of exciting matchups. And, of course, our guys, Gary Parrish, Matthew Norlander, continuing that conversation. They are previewing all of the Sweet 16 games on the men and women's side on the latest episode of the Ion College Basketball Podcast. You can download and listen wherever you get your pods or scan that QR.